Test, test. Good afternoon, fans, and welcome to Municipal Stadium for this doubleheader, conference doubleheader between your Post University Eagles and the Felician University Golden Falcons. Michael Vesci joining you on air for today's doubleheader. We got nine innings in game one, seven innings in game two up top here, and we've got the starting lineups for you all set to go for Felician. It's going to be Thomas Kendrick leading off, followed by Jose David Madreno batting second. Batting third will be Ricky Voss. Batting fourth, excuse me, will be number 13, Dury Henau. And then batting fifth will be Hayden Walters, followed by Jack Skrivnik. And then Chris Belosi, Dylan DiBartolomeo. And then rounding it out will be Julian Ujima. On the mound for post, though, is Joe Christiana taking his warm-ups right now. Christiana coming into this game. That's appeared in five games so far, starting all five. He's got a 5.04 ERA in those appearances. 25 innings pitched, 38 hits, 16 runs, 14 of them have been earned, 7 walks, and 22 strikeouts. He's given up four home runs, three doubles, and opponents are hitting 355 against him. And he'll get ready... To face off against Thomas Kendrick, who leads off this game for the Golden Falcons here in game one from Municipal Stadium. This game was moved up from tomorrow due to the rain coming into the area. Softball playing in about an hour from now at home as well against AIC in a non-conference matchup. But Christiana set, we're set, and he deals to Kendrick outside for ball one. We are underway with game one here. From Municipal Stadium, Kendrick hitting 400 on the year, 24 games played, 24 games started, 90 at bats, 36 hits. As that one's just inside on the, excuse me, outside corner. It looked like he wasn't going to get the call there, but he does. And the count moves to one and one. Cristiano working fast, and the count moves to two and one. Kendrick also with four doubles, one triple, one home run, 14 RBIs, 45 total bases. He struck out 10 times this year, and he's 5 for 6 as that one's fouled off out of play. He's 5 for 6 on stolen bases, and then 30 put-out attempts. He is a perfect 1,000 fielding percentage, one of a couple Golden Falcons on this team with a perfect fielding percentage in as many tries. 2-2 two -two from Christiana. That one swung on. Christiana tried to bear hand. That's going to be a tough play. That's going to be up the middle for a base hit. So the leadoff hitter on for the Golden Falcons, and they're in business now with Jose David Medrano coming up to the plate. Christiana tried the bare hand now, and then Evan Cornwall, who's playing shortstop for your Eagles today, was just not able to snag that one on the ground. Of course, that was going to be a tough play right up the middle, so no fault of his. That will go down as a hit. And bring Medrano to the plate. Just about 40 degrees here, a light breeze from left to right. Christiana checking on the runner at first. Nothing doing there for Kendrick. It's been a cold spring so far here at the fields. Hoping for some warmer weather soon. Is That's going to be a sack bun. Going to go down 1-3. Christiana nearly airmails it, but... Right there to pick it up is Chris Corchado. Runner moves over to second, so one away on the sack. That'll go 1-3. Kendrick on second with one out. Voss at the plate. Voss comes into the game with a 278 batting average, 21 games played and started. He's got 22 hits and 79 at bats, two home runs, 18 RBIs. Second on the team in RBI, RBIs behind Diari Hinao, who will come up shortly. Umpire is talking about something right now.
So Kendrick got on on the leadoff single on a 2-2 count. Then the first pitch was bunted on the next play. Sack bunt over to second. Kendrick now on second after that one by Madreno. And after a brief conversation, they're keeping everything as is. And Cristiano will look to see if he can get out of this runner in scoring position jam here early on in game one. Eagles won the other day 4-1 to one on the road against Felician. That's a ball. Matt Seaman with seven innings in that one helped get the Eagles the win. Only one early run given up and posted the rest. Wasn't so much of an offensive performance for them as it was mistakes by Felician pitching as two runs did come across on pass balls. That one's fouled off to the left. Justin Rivera had an RBI or two in that game. And then a late run off at one of those pass balls helped give some insurance. And then Brennan Holligan came in to finish off the job in the final two innings to get the Eagles their first conference victory of the, the year. Eagles are 9-13 coming to this one, but they played a bunch of tough opponents down in Florida before today. 1-1 one, one count coming. That one's flied into left field, ranging over to get it is Karen. And there's two away here. In top of the first. That brings Dari Hinao to the plate. We just talked about 22 RBIs on the year he leads the team. He's also got three home runs. He's hitting 368. Second best on the team behind Kendrick, who stands on second with two outs here. Like you mentioned, Christiana coming into this game. ERA just over five. A 355 batter average against him. He's having just off the plate for ball one. Important thing to note when you look at the ERAs across the board, post as a team, 7.47 ERA opponents, 3.58. However, the important thing to note is they did play a lot of teams that were either ranked or on the verge of being ranked or regionally ranked while down in Florida, as well as they played Southern New Hampshire last week, who was fourth in the region. And then they also played second in the nation, North Greenville University down south for three games, as well as Barry University for three games. So a lot of tough opponents early on in the Eagles' schedule. That contributes to that. As that one's lined into left field. Carroll's going to pick it up. We got going to be a base hit. That's going to be a single. Scoring is Kendrick from second. And the Golden Falcons get on the board here first in the first inning. It's 1-0 Felician. Now, Aiden Walter's coming to the plate here. Two outs. Runner on first. As he now gets his team leading 23rd RBI of the season. Now Walters will see if he can keep the inning going. He's hitting 289 on the year. 24 hits and 83 at bats. One home run, 18 RBIs. Again, he's tied for second on the team as that one's in there for a strike from Christiana. A one from Christiana is fouled off to the left and out of play. So the count moves to 0-2. Big for Christiana to get ahead in the count. Now he's got to try and finish the deal here. He's got a pitch he can waste. Let's see if he can get Walters to chase. Get out of the inning, only giving up one run. After some smart small ball play from the Golden Falcons here in the top of the first. Looks for the pickoff play. The Eagles did get a pickoff earlier this year against Southern New Hampshire. I believe it was Noah Connor who was able to manufacture that one. And the one two. Excuse me, now it's one and two. There was that pitch to waste there. That one's going to be fouled off the mitt. Brennan unable to hold on to it, so we'll move the count to, we'll keep the count at one and two, and Walter stays alive here in the early going. Chest off the outside corner, and the count will move to two and two.
Umpires behind the plate today. It's Patrick Burns, and then Tom Ryberg is at first base. Those two will obviously switch going into game two. As that one's chopped foul, count stays two and two. Felician has a team coming into this one at 10 and 14 overall, four and one at home, one and three away, and then uh, neutral site games, which a lot of baseball teams up north play. It's five to ten. As a team, Felician's got a 5.69 ERA. Fouled off again, and Walter's staying alive here. Nick DiCarlo is starting today for Felician in game one. Get you some numbers on him in between innings when we get the field set for the bottom of the first and give you the Eagles order. But for now, Christiana trying to work out of this at bat. Walter swings, and that one's chopped over to the right side, excuse me, left side. Fire across the diamond, and that's not going to be in time. I believe that was Rivera. That's going to be an infield single. Deep in the gap, a chopper over to him, and he got it near the foul line and got obviously inside of the third baseline to be fair, but the wheels of Walters get him to first. This inning continues after a long eight pitch at bat. Christiana now has to work out of a first and second jam with two outs here. As the middle of the lineup comes up in Skirvanek. That one's outside for a ball. Skirvanek comes in with a 250 average. 19 hits. He scored 14 times. That one's high for ball two. Four doubles, one triple, five home runs, 12 RBIs. Struck out 25 times this year, second most on the team. But he's ahead in the count, 3-0. and And if you're Skravanek, you're just probably going to let Christiana throw this one and make him make a strike here in terms of the yeah, bat or you walk the first. He does just that, takes the pitch, and it's in there for a strike. So now the count moves to three and one. Skravanek still obviously in the driver's seat of this at bat. Golden Falcons looking to take some momentum early here in the top of the first of game one. And, oh, look at that. Just what I talked about. That's going to be a one, three, possibly four pickoff, and it will be. One, three, four pickoff. I talked about it just a few minutes ago, the pickoff play, and they do it right there. Eagles going to escape some trouble here on the 1-3-4 pickoff. One run on three hits. One left on base for Felician. And now as we get ready for the bottom of the first, we'll give you some numbers. Nick DiCarlo taking the mound. He's 1-2 and two on the year. Six games started, six appearances. A 7.46 ERA, 25 in one-thirds innings pitched. 39 hits. 23 runs given up, 21 of them earned, 14 strikeouts, excuse me, 14 walks to 41 strikeouts. He's only allowed six extra base hits, four doubles, and two home runs. Opponents are hitting 361 against them. He's also hit four batters this year. As we look at the Eagles lineup, it goes like this. Michael Pavelchak will lead off, followed by Evan Cornwell. Chris Corchado will bat third. DJ Karen batting fourth. Justin Rivera batting fifth, Jimmy Brennan sixth, Jalen Kelly batting seventh, Hunter Keller batting eighth, and Danny Gill batting ninth. So that's your order for the Eagles. Pavelchak, give you some numbers on him. He just had his on-base streak snapped a few games ago. Get the exact number for you here in a moment, but it was up near 30 until the doubleheader against Southern New Hampshire when it was snapped in game one of that doubleheader. And the streak obviously dated back to last year. It was 27 straight games in which he got on base before he went 0 for 4 in game one of that doubleheader, ending that streak. Since that streak ended too, Pavelchak... <laughs> 
got right back on base in the last three games. He's riding a three-game hit streak now. As he went two for four in the rest of the two, excuse me, in the final two games of the three-game set against Southern New Hampshire. And then at Felician the other day, he went one for four with a double. So Pavelchak will step in to lead this game off for your Eagles and see if they can get the offense going and mount a response after the early score by Felician on three hits. But a good pickoff move by Christiana. Got the out at first, one, three, four. To help the Eagles get out of some trouble. That ball's low in the dirt for ball one, so DiCarlo behind early on this batter in Pavelchak. Pavelchak scored in the seventh inning of last game when Chris Corchado had his sack fly. As that one's going to be fouled off to the left. No one's able to get to that one, so the count moved to one and one. Got three Golden Falcons in the area of the ball. But no one was quite able to get a glove on it. So we moved to one and one on the count. Pavelchak so far this season leading the team in average 342 in 22 games. 27 hits and 79 at bats. Four doubles, 10 RBIs, no home runs. 10 walks to 15 strikeouts. You like to see that. That one's in there for a strike. One for two on the base pass. Only one error in the field this year in 58 attempts. On base percentage at 480. That one's in there for a strike on the outside corner. Strikeout number 16 on the year for Pavelchak at the plate. To bring Evan Cornwell to the dish. He's hitting 250. 17 hits and 68 at bats. Four doubles, one home run, eight RBIs. He had the game winning hit against the Delphi in the 11th inning down in Florida several weeks ago when Post was kicking off their season. That one's in there for strike. Count moves to 1 and 1. As a team, the Eagles hitting 244 so far this year. Again, they had some tough opponents down there that have held them in check. But an interesting thing to note is that one's going to be chopped off of Cornwell's foot. Interesting thing to note is they've only scored more than three runs in three of their last 11 games. They've struggled to get offense going. And one of those games was last game where they won 4-1. to one, But two of those four runs were on passed balls. Offensively, only two of those runs came on hits. One via double, one via flyout. That one's outside for ball two. That one's in there for a strike, and he's caught looking. Cornwell down. We'll bring Chris Corchado to plate here with two outs. Yeah, so I got the official numbers here for you. In eight of their last 11 games, Post has manufactured three runs or fewer. And during that stretch, leading up to that game, last game where they got it, they were 2-0 when scoring more than three runs, 2-6 and six when scoring three runs or fewer. That one's going to be grounded up the middle. Corchado's going to get on with a single. And the Eagles looking to do some two-out damage here as DJ Karen comes to the plate, hitting just under 300. Post is also 3-10 and ten on the season when they allow the first run of the game. 6-3 and three when they score the game's first run after their win last game against Felician. That one's up high for ball one. one count here to Karen. That one's going to be fouled off. Count moves to 1-1. One and one. K-1 
Darren riding a four-game hitting streak coming into today. His biggest game of the year so far came when they're down at North Greenville, a five-for-six six performance with three RBIs and one double. That one's going to be chipped into right field, getting over there for the out in right field to end the inning. That'll retire the side for the Eagles. So we head into the second inning. It's one nothing, Golden Falcons. Take a quick break and be right back with the second inning here on the CACC Network. Back here for the top of the second inning. Skrvanek back at the dish after the pickoff play at first last inning. And the first pitch swinging. He's going to lift that one in the center field. Going back to try and grab it is Danny Gill. He can't do it. Karen's going to get over and throw it in, but Skrvanek's going to be in with a double. Gill took a hard dive into that warning track, which is not dirt. I'm pretty sure it's. it might be dirt. It's hard to tell from here. It kind of looked like gravel almost. But that's going to be a double for Skrvanek on the first pitch of the at-bat. That'll bring Bialosi to the plate. Chris Bialosi. With another scoring opportunity for the Golden Falcons here early on. And he's going to have to sacrifice him over to third. He does just that. Play goes 1-3, but Skrvanek over to third. Dylan Bartolomeo coming to the dish now. Runner on third, only one out. So golden opportunity to score here if you are the Golden Falcons. That one's going to be fouled off to the left. Again, if you're tuning in just now, first game will be nine innings, second game will be seven innings. So plenty of baseball action still to go as we're in the top of the second here from Municipal Stadium. And starting up at two over at Lemoy Field, Post University softball looking to get in the win column. Starting the year rough, two and 14. They're taking on a five and five AIC team in hopes of getting back in the win column and snapping their four game losing streak. Their games tomorrow against Jefferson rained out. That game, Those games got moved to April 7th on a Sunday. That one swung on and missed. DiBartolomeo goes down swinging. That's a big second out for Christiana because now you can't sacrifice Skrvanek home. That'll bring Julian Ujima to the plate. Pretty much every team that was playing tomorrow has gotten moved for post. There's that one's outside for ball one. Tennis is postponed against Jefferson. They were supposed to go down there. You see we're playing a doubleheader right now. This was originally scheduled for tomorrow. And then softball's doubleheader, like I just mentioned, wiped out due to rain as well. As that one swung on a miss. The count moves to one and one. 
And then Women's Lacrosse is moving up from noon to 10.30 down at Holy Family in hopes of trying to beat out the worst of the rain down in Pennsylvania. As Ujima follows that one back, and the count moves to 1-2. and two. So that's the field that's set this weekend. Pretty much only one team in action for post-university. That one's down low. And then we got no games next weekend either for Easter weekend. Baseball will be back here early in the week to take on Chestnut Hill for another conference doubleheader. That one's over the plate for strike three. Christiana gets him looking, so he escapes the leadoff double by Skravanek. Keeps the score at one nothing. Felician heading into the bottom of the second. Eagles will look to see if they can get some runs when we get back here. Justin Rivera to the dish. Fifth batter in the order for the Eagles looking to start something for them. Corchado got on base with two outs last inning, but then DJ Karen flew out to right field to end that threat. Now DiCarlo back out there trying to see if he can retire the Eagles once more here in the second inning. The last time these two teams met, as this one's low for a ball, the last time these two teams met, here at Municipal Stadium was the CACC Championship. Post was looking to try and win their first ever. They won the first game they had to against Felician, lost the second. Obviously giving the Golden Falcons the CACC Championship there. So looking to get the win here and avenge that. And also start conference play out on the right foot as that one's grounded to second base. Fielding it as Walters over to first. There's one away here. For Jimmy Brennan, newest member of the 150 hit club for post, the seventh in program history to do that against Southern New Hampshire in his first at bat of game one of that three game series. Michael Pavelchak became the sixth player earlier this year against Barry University. And as I mentioned that, Brennan, that's going to be a hit if he gets on, and that will be a hit to the shortstop. Ujima in the gap there was trying to Derek Jeter it. Obviously, that was way too deep in the hole, so Brennan's going to get another hit. But like I mentioned, Pavelchak became the sixth player down at Barry University to join the 150 hit club. Jimmy Brandon does have a chance at the all-time record. Four hits since he's got a couple more years left as Jalen Kelly steps to the plate. That one's inside for ball one. Kelly had a couple years of injuries and then on the road against Palm Beach Atlantic, he got his first collegiate hit. That one's on the outside corner for a strike. Count moves to one and one. So the Eagles with runner on here with one out against DiCarlo. 
Bottom of the order up. Trying to see if they can do some damage. One one paints that inside corner on Kelly for strike number two. Dan Luis, who's everybody's going to be trying to chase, 193 career hits. Jimmy Brennan, who obviously just touched 150 a few games ago, seems like he would be in line to do it. DJ Karen, if you were counting his all-time hits besides post, would technically speaking have the most hits in program history, but 156 of those hits came at Nichols College at the D3 level, therefore they don't count. In Karen's career coming into the year, he has 233 career hits, but less than half of those have come at post. So Jimmy Brennan is the only one who really is going to have a shot at it right now. That one's lined up the middle by Kelly for a base hit. Chasing down to Skravanek. Moving over to third is Brennan. Runners on the corners, and the Eagles are in business here. In the bottom of the second, looking to tie this one up. Big first to third there by Brennan. Michael Pavelchak, I should mention too, is also has the potential to chase down Luisi too. It would take a lot. He was at 154 hits a couple weeks ago. He's gotten a few more since then. But he'd have to have a big year. But there's a few people that could possibly chase down that record who are currently playing for post. As Hunter Keller steps to the plate now. Chance to do some damage, get this game tied up, or even give his team the lead. I should note, Kelly isn't the fastest runner if you're looking for somebody to try to go from first to home. So unless something's hit deep into the outfield, Kelly probably is only going to get to third. But a chance if something's hit into one of those gaps to the wall that Kelly could score from first. 1-0 count to Keller. He's going to bunt that one, and that's going to be a sack bunt, but it's going to score a run. Smart play by Hunter Keller. Gets the job done. 1-3 sack bunt with the RBI. Kelly moves over to second. There's two away here, and we're tied up at one all. Danny Gill now to the plate. So the number nine hitter coming up for the Eagles. DiCarlo only at 25 pitches so far through two one and two thirds innings, excuse me. As he faces the bottom of the order, this is what you want to do. You want to get out of the inning right here against Gill and not have to face Pavel Chak in the top of that Eagle lineup. Save them for the third with the bases cleared. If Gill gets on, depending on what he does, Kelly either scores or you have runners on the corners, possibly with two outs in the top of your lineup up. To Carlo firing the 1 0 in there for a strike. Count moves to 1 and 1. Both teams going through the order once through two innings already. Top of the lineup will be up for Felicia next inning in Kendrick, Madrano, and Voss. That one's going to be popped up behind us. Now to play for strike number two. So DiCarlo, one strike away from getting out of the jam after allowing the tying run here in the second. Again, still plenty of ball game left, but it is still technically the tying run. One two outside. Count moves to two and two. You know, I mentioned the pass balls as well from the Felician defense. Twelve of those have gone to Madrano. And he is behind the plate today. So that's a ball and moves to three and two. So that's something to note. Madrano had two pass balls last game and it led to two ego runs, which ended up Pretty much making the difference between, a, again, a 4-1 game and a 2-1 game. Uh, it really changes the scenarios, especially because of when the Eagles scored those runs. It was bookend. Their first run of the game came on a pass ball. Their last run of the game came on a pass ball. Uh, so you take those away. You have a very different game at that point. As that one's in there for strike number three, DiCarlo gets him looking. We'll head to the third inning. Game tied up at one after the nice sack bunt by Hunter Keller. It's 1-1 heading to third here. On the CACC Network.
Top of the lineup coming to the plate here for the Golden Falcons. Be Kendrick to lead off. He's one for one on the day. Had that single to start things off. Stepping in against Christiana, who's got 31 pitches through two innings, 22 for strikes. And that one's in there for a strike, count 0-1. Good job by Christiana to get ahead right away. Now that one's grounded to third. Rivera, nice scoop, and he flips it over to first, and Corchado grabs it. One down here, 5-3 for Jose David Madrano. Quick whip around the CACC. Jefferson leading Goldie Beacom 8-3, top of the fifth. We're obviously in the top of the third, tied at one. Bridgeport leads Caldwell at home 2-0 in the bottom of the second. Still to come, Chestnut Hill and Holy Family at 2 o'clock. And then game two of all the previously mentioned games that I just brought up as that one's fouled back. Strike number two against Madrano. Madrano had that sack bunt in the first inning as that one's not going to be a sack bunt, but it's going to go down. It's going to go down 1-3 just like it did his first time around. This one will count against him, though, as he'll move to 0-1 on the day. And that will bring Voss to the plate now, who is also 0-1 for, for the day. Flew out in his first at bat. And he's going to ground that one over to Keller at second. Keller over to Corchado. Real quick, one, two, three inning here for the Eagles. And they'll get right back up to bat to try and take the lead. <laughs> A few players jumping around to stay warm, it looks like, as they greet their team coming off of the field. We'll get you some score updates, too, from softball around the CACC after this break here. Back with the bottom of the third here, Michael Pavelchak, top of the lineup leading off. He's 0 for 1 on the day. The first two Eagles batters last time around were retired by DiCarlo before Chris Corchado's single, and then you saw the rest of it in the first, how things ended up. As we take a look at what the softball world looks like for the CACC, that one's outside for ball one to Pavelchak. Post taking on AIC at 2. Holy Family and Bridgeport in a CACC matchup also at 2. Caldwell taking on Franklin Pierce at 2. Dominican and Pace take on each other at 2 as well. Felician and Wilmington at 2.30. That one's outside for a ball. Then all those teams will do a doubleheader. So a couple of conference matchups going on today for softball. Pavelchak checked the swing there. They say he didn't go. You look at Post's record at 9-13, and 13, and again, I mentioned they've played a lot of tough teams coming into the day. But the season is still young, whether you believe it or not, despite seeing that many games get 22 games played already in just over a few weeks, uh, because this conference schedule has just started for these teams. 
And from here on out, it's pretty much all conference games as Pavel Chak's going to work a leadoff walk to bring Evan Cornwell to the plate. When you really take a look at this schedule as a whole, we're just getting the ball rolling here as the rest of the games the rest of the way are all CACC games until the end of the year on April 30th when Post goes up to play Southern New Hampshire for the fourth time this year. They'll see if they can get the season split against them as they took the second game of that doubleheader. That one's in their first strike to Cornwell. They took game two of the doubleheader on last Saturday here at Municipal before losing game three the next day. It was their first win against Southern New Hampshire since the early 2000s and before they were officially a Division II school. They were still considered NAIA, recognized that way, as that one's going to go foul for Cornwell, looking to sacrifice Pavelchak over. So technically, in Division II history, that was Post's first win in school history against Southern New Hampshire. But in the overall all-time record book, it was the second win all-time against Southern New Hampshire because of that move from NAIA. That was back in 2000 when that game happened, a 15-12 to win, and then the Eagles had lost 11 in a row against them. Excuse me, 12 in a row because they lost game one of that. 0-2 oh, is in there for strike three. Cornwell goes down looking. We've seen a lot of batters get frustrated at the plate in the first few innings from both sides over the called strikes looking against Burn, uh, excuse me, with Patrick Burns behind the dish. I'm not sure if they're frustrated at themselves or at the location of the pitch. It's kind of hard to tell from up here as there's going to be a pickoff move to first, nothing doing. Can't really tell if they're upset at themselves or if they're upset with the home plate umpire and where he's calling it in terms of location. To me, it looks like he's painting those corners just barely in both directions, both Christiana and DiCarlo. That one's outside for ball one. But obviously, I'm not in the batter's box either, so it's a different different viewpoint from down there than we are from up here. It's Corchado ahead on the count 1-0 right now against DiCarlo. Eagles looking to get the... Go ahead, run. As Pavlachak's going to take off for second. Madrano throwing down. It's not going to be in time. It didn't look like it would be in time anyways. That one was in there for a strike, though. So the count does move to 1-1. One one. Pavlachak now, though, in scoring position. With only one out here. Pavlachak's second stolen base in three attempts this year. The 1-1. Looks like, looks like that's going to be a low for a ball. They're going to peel over and say he didn't go. I thought he did go from up here, which is why I was waiting for the call. So the count moves to 2-1 against Corchado. Again, runner in scoring position in Pavelchak. Your cleanup hitter and DJ Karen on deck. So this is the optimal part of the lineup that you want up if you're the Eagles to potentially plate that go-ahead run here in the third. Take back momentum in your favor. And again, Corchado checks his swing. But he didn't go again, and that's going to be a ball. Three and one. They're going to peel down, and yet again, Tom Ryberg says he did not go. That one looked a little less like a check swing. Excuse me. It looked more like a check swing than the first one. I thought Corchado may have came around a little bit more on that first one than he did on that second one that we just saw right there. Again, he's one for one with a single in his first at bat, and he's in the driver's seat here. Three one. Chopper over to second, though. And there we go with the second out of the inning. Walters over to Voss at first, two away. But Pavelchak moves over to third for DJ Karen, the cleanup hitter, who is 0 for 1 today. Karen flew out in the first inning to Skrvanek in right field. To look to see if he can plate a run here. And that ball's outside and in the dirt. 1 0 the count. Again, wouldn't it be the worst thing in the world here either if you're DiCarlo, if you walk Karen? You have two bases open with only one out that you need to get. And then you're going to start facing the middle of the lineup. But he's going to get Karen to pop up on the infield. It'll be a matter of can it get caught. And it is caught over there by Walters on the infield. So that'll retire the side. 
No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on base for post. We head to the top of the fourth inning. 1-4-0 for Felician, 1-3-0 for your Eagles here on the CACC Network. Dari He now up to the plate now. He's one for one on the day. He was the one who helped get that run for Felician in the first inning as that one's in the first strike from Christiana. He now led off with the single. It's high for a ball. Correction on that. He now got the RBI single in the first inning. I was thinking of the second inning when Skrovanek let off with the double. After Walters was picked off at first base to end that first inning. As that one's going to be chopped over to Cornwell. Nice stab on it there. It gets it over to Corchado. 6-3 put out for the first out of the inning. And brings Walters to the plate. As Christiana, Christiana's been efficient so far. 40 pitches, 30 strikes. So a good strike to ball ratio so far for him. After getting into a little bit of trouble in that first inning, he struggled against the Felician hitters their first time around. He's worked quickly, excuse me, in these last two innings, mowing down the Golden Falcons offense. That one's low for ball two. Count moves to two and zero. Christiana's line so far: four hits, one run. It was earned. Two strikeouts, no walks. That one's in there for strike two. Excuse me, strike one. Count is two and one. Only about forty minutes into this game. That one's outside for. Ball number three. About 40 minutes in this game into the top of the fourth inning. And then we have obviously seven more innings after this in game number two. That one's fouled back towards us, but we have a I have a protective fence in front of us. But it got everybody up here to flinch a little to my left. 3-2 count from Christiana, and that's going to be the first walk of the day for him. Christiana was trying to paint that inside corner on Walters. Couldn't do so. So Walters walks down to first, and Skravanek comes to the dish with one on and one out. Skravanek obviously doubled in the outfield. We saw it in his first at bat. Danny Gill tried to range over and get it. Couldn't. Hit the wall almost on that warning track, and then Karen was able to pick it up and fire it in. Felician was not able to get a run out of that that inning as Christiana, whoa, almost airmailed that one by Corchado. Another interesting thing to note, too, with the pickoff plays to first or third, because of that protective, basically, fence in front of the dugout, it can't get into the dugout unless it took a very weird hop. So in a lot of cases where you'd see in the MLB or in other college stadiums where the ball, if it's thrown to first and it misses, it can go into the dugout, it's probably not going to, it really can't go into the dugout from here uh, at this field which kind of helps the pitchers a little bit in terms of if they throw a wild, it's probably just going to bounce off of that 
cage and rattle back towards their fielder. So the, the batter is only going to get one base pretty much no matter what. It's no not going to be any extra free bases that come about due to the ball going into the dugout at this field. Count moves to 1-1 one and one now against Skravanek. Be a low C on deck. Pickoff move once more to Corchado. Doesn't get Walters there. Taking off for a second was Walters, but Skravanek fouls that one off, so the count moves to one and two. Clouds starting to break a little bit. Not expecting too, too much sun today, although it would be nice because even though it is only 40 degrees as they try to pick off Walters at first again, even though it's only 40 degrees and the wind chill is probably around 30, 32, what's helped is when the sun is out, it's much warmer because of the angle of it this time of year, which kind of helps to warm things up if you're out in the sun. But there's been no sun in New England lately. It's been behind the clouds or behind rain so even when it has been around this temperature it's felt more like 25 30 rather than 40 45 some players are even bundled up today too wearing the full-on mask because that one's fouled off just to keep their heads warm Skravanek staying alive there with that foul ball the count remains two and two Christiana fell behind in the count 1-0 before coming back with a pair of strikes to get ahead. And now he's going to get Skravanek swinging. And there are two way for Bialosi. He had a sacrifice in his first at bat. Try and get the Golden Falcons ahead that time around in the order because Skravanek had let off with a double. They bunted him over to third and with one out were not able to get the run across because of the strikeout to DiBartolomeo. Tolomeo. Runner taking off for second in Walters. That one's fouled back by Bialose, so he'll have to go back. This is the second time he's tried to steal. And both times, the batters swung away, foul. Looks like maybe they're trying to go with a hit and run, but haven't been able to successfully do that yet. Christiana now at 52 pitches. Excuse me, 53 after the last one he threw. And probably around 10 to 11 pickoff attempts of the Felician runners so far today. He was successful earlier. That's strike number two. He picked off Walters at first in the first at bat. That was when Skravanek was up. Helps get the Eagles out of some trouble. Now he's going to get Bialosi swinging and that'll end the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on base for the Golden Falcons. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. DiCarlo coming back out with 46 pitches. And Justin Rivera coming to the play when we come back from this break.
Justin Rivera back to the dish. He's 0 for 1 on the day, playing at third. That one's in there for a strike. 0 and 1 the count from DiCarlo. Low one in the dirt, skips away from Madrano. Excuse me, D. Bartolomeo is behind the plate today. Madrano is DHing in this one. That one's in their first strike. Count moves to one and two. So when I mentioned that pass ball stat earlier, I'll bring it back up in a second as that one's chopped over to third. Firing over is he now. It's a first for the 5-3 put out. And that'll bring Jimmy Brennan to the plate. Bartolomeo has five pass balls. Sedrano, uh, Madreno, excuse me, with 12. Again, two of those came the other day. That one's outside for ball one. He's coming into this game. Jimmy Brennan is talking about the all-time hits. He's at 152. Again, it's only his junior year, too. So you got to figure, as long as he stays healthy... He's probably going to have a shot at Dan Luisi's record. At 152, he sits, what, 41 back. I mean, it may happen depending on how deep Post was able to is able to go and how well and how hot he hits this year uh, for him to get that mark and potentially become the first 200 hitter of all time. 200 hit hitter of all time. But he obviously has some work to do. To get there, he had his hit and it had a hit in his first at bat, so I should say that's actually 153. He just passed Jim Contu as well for six most hits all time, and it might actually end up being a battle between him and Pavelchak on who's going to be ahead of the other after after this year. Chopped over to short. And that one's going to be a low throw. It's going to be uh, that one's going to be tough to be giving a hit there. It was a long throw, and it's still going. They're still trying to get it. He's going to go all the way to third. And now Brennan thinking about home because no one was covering home. So a low throw there. by Ujima, gets Brennan all the way to third. And now the Eagles in business with only one out here, a chance to take the lead on potentially just a sack fly. Jalen Kelly up at the dish. He takes the first one for a strike. Oh, one count. Slow for ball one. Yeah, so that's going to be a straight three base error for Jimmy Brennan. It was chopped to short. Looking at the replay on my phone right now. Chopped to short, and you can see on the replay of it that it was just a low throw there by Ujima and... For that reason, with plenty of time to beat Brennan to the bag, it's going to go down as an error on him because of the low throw that forced Voss to try and pick it. And then because the ball skipped away, he ended up getting two more bases because no one was able to get over to it. And nearly got all the way home because no one was covering home. But this is going to be an infield fly, so that's what you needed. Voss is going to retire him with the pop-out to him at first. And now Hunter Keller's up with two outs. So DiCarlo gets Kelly out the way you want to get him out to avoid Brennan from scoring on that costly error. As you see now on the board, it also says an error. 
So one four one for Felician, one three zero for the Eagles. A chance to score here again. We just mentioned the runner on third with one out. Now there's two outs. You need a hit or another pass ball potentially as two runs last game. Like I mentioned, came on pass balls. Do do you somehow get a pass ball here from Bartolomeo and take the lead? Keller ahead on the count, 1-0, and and now it's even up at 1-1 one and one as DiCarlo comes back with a strike on that one. Only the second game in conference play for either team. And there you go. There's a wild pitch, and they're, <laughs> the go-ahead run's going to score. So I just mentioned that you would need some sort of hit or pass ball, even a wild pitch helps you get it, and... That's going to not be even an earned run for DiCarlo, so it doesn't get charged to him. Again, there's two outs in the inning because Brennan reached on an error. Everything at this point that he gives up is unearned. It goes down as a run, but it doesn't go down as an earned run for him, which counts towards your ERA. That one's going to be in there for a strike. There's a lot of intricacies when it comes to earned runs and unearned runs, which if we have a lot of errors in this game for whatever reason, I'll walk you through it as we go along. But that's one of those where it's going to go down as... A run, but it's not going to go down as an earned run for DiCarlo, which keeps his ERA where it is at right now based on the only one run he's given up. The three base error to Brennan ends up coming back to haunt Felician as they now trail two to one. And now that one's going to be popped up on the infield. They're going to see if they can get it. Bartolomeo going back. He's got it behind the plate. The foul out. Goes straight back to Bartolomeo at catcher. But the Eagles take the lead. Bartolomeo will come up to the dish in the top of the fifth. The Eagles take the lead on a wild pitch after a three-base error for Jimmy Brennan. Two to one heading into the top of the fifth. Dear Bartolomeo coming to this year top five. If you just missed it, Jimmy Brennan got on with a three-base error and then scored on a wild pitch by DiCarlo. Eagles now lead 2-1 to one as we head to about the midway point of this one. And as we head to the midpoint of this one, we're getting ready for action over at LeMoyne Field with softball taking on AIC. We'll give you score updates periodically throughout that one as that one's in there for a ball to Bartolomeo from Christiana, and it's 1-0 and in the count. So Felician will see what they can do. Again, they had three hits in the first inning. They've only had one since. And as I say that, that's right into the corner. That's going to be a double for Di Bartolomeo, it looks like. Although he might be hosed down at second. A nice throw from left field from Karen, but it's not going to be enough. As Di Bartolomeo is in there with a sliding double. And now the Golden Falcons in business with a chance to potentially take the lead back. And who better to try and do that than Ujima, who just committed that error that led to the go-ahead run. Seeing if he can try and tie it up here. He's 0 for 1 with a strikeout today. Anchoring the bottom of that lineup. So the Eagles with a chance. Excuse me. The Golden Falcons. We got, we got two different birds out here today. The Golden Falcons with a chance to. Re-knot the score up at 2 all. Or even take the lead if Ujima went yard. 
That one's going to be in there for a strike. It looks like they're trying to do what they did the first time around when Skravanek got on with his leadoff double. They're trying to sacrifice him over to third to try and give him two cracks at the game-tying run. However, the last time that happened, Christiana came back to get a strikeout with the next batter. And by Elosi, that one's going to be on the outside corner for a strike. And now, just like that, uh, Ujima cannot wait for a pitch and try and sack bunt because sack bunt going foul would be a out and that would be the first out of the inning and then you've done absolutely nothing to get that runner over to third like they were trying to do. So Eugene will swing away if he has a chance to. That one's in the dirt, gets away from Brennan but not far enough for the runner to move over to second. He'll remain there. But still a big opportunity obviously for the Golden Falcons to get themselves back into this one. Again, we had a low-scoring affair in the first game between these two teams a few days ago, and that one's going to be lifted into right field. That might actually be enough. As Pavelchak's going to go over and get it, that will be enough to get Bartolomeo over to third. So it works like a sack bunt. It doesn't go down as a sacrifice, obviously, because it was hit to the outfield, but... That will move the runner over to third in Bartolomeo. And now the top of the lineup coming up, leading off with Thomas Kendrick. A chance to potentially tie this game back up. Do they try and maybe pull what Hunter Keller did to tie the game up in the second with a bunt down the first base line? Which helped pull DiCarlo off the mound and the catcher moving towards it. It's a possibility, but it looks like Kendrick's going to swing away. It is the top of the order as opposed to Keller who is hitting eighth in the order. So it changes your strategy a little bit here, but a couple chances now here, as you see, Corchado actually is in on the lip of the grass. So is Rivera. Both of them are in on the play in case. Dealing in Kendrick fouls that one off. A ground ball to the infield may not also be the worst thing in the world. It could potentially score the run depending on where it's hit to, but the fielders are all in on the infield. As you see from left to right, you've got Rivera, Cornwell, Keller, and Corchado all near the lip of the grass. And now that one's going to be chopped to first. Corchado's going to look off the runner and take it himself. So that's a big second out there as the run's not going to go anywhere. DiBartolomeo got looked back to first. And that'll bring Jose David Medrano to the plate with the chance to potentially tie it up for the Golden Falcons. But now there's two away. Defensive alignment works out well there. It's always a risky move to bring the infield in on the grass, especially with only one out. And in general, depending on the time of the game, only because in certain scenarios when you do that, if the ball is rocketed hard enough, it can get to the outfield for an easy hit, possibly a two-base hit, depending on which way the outfielders are shading. But in that case, it pays off for the Eagles, who are now one strike away from getting out of trouble as Christiana had in the count 0-2 after that foul by Madreno. O2 from Christiana. Got him the swing, but it fouls into the net. Count remains 0 and 2. Christiana's pitch count after that up to 67, 46 for strikes in the fifth. You got to think at where he's at right now. Head coach Ray Scold will probably have him go at this pace, probably two, two more innings if I had to guess. Get him to seven as he gets the strikeout looking, gets Madreno, and we're headed to the bottom of the fifth with a 2 1 lead for the Eagles. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left on base. Up for the Eagles, Gill, Pavelchak, and Cornwell when we get back from this break.
Danny Gill here to bat in the bottom of the fifth inning, post leading two to one. Took the lead last inning on that three base error by the shortstop, Ujima. And then a wild pitch by DiCarlo. Otherwise, though, honestly, for both teams, no one's really had much of a threat or an offensive breakout so far. It's been pretty mundane. It's been a pitcher's game. And that's how it was the other day. Like I mentioned before, four runs for the Eagles, two on pass balls. So it really has been almost defensive in terms of what's changed things. That took a weird hop on Ujima, but he was charging on it. That'll go down as an error, and he'll get to first. A little bit of a tough play. Took an awkward bounce, but Ujima charged hard on that one when he probably could have waited for it to come to him. Gill is a faster runner, but there still was really no rush, and then he just kind of let it skip up and over his glove. And that'll bring Michael Pavelchak to the plate. Was low for a ball. Counts 0-1. Pavelchak 0 for 1 today. Pavelchak with 157 career hits. So he's officially passed Ryan DiPolo and Jimmy Coleman on the all-time list. So as of right now, he is third all-time in hits. Two and zero, oh, and that one's in there for a strike, and then that's going to be a stolen base for Gill. Runner on second, two one count. That one's strike number two. Swung on a missed. Two two count here to Pavelchak. Runner on second, no one out. Ooh, just missed that outside corner. DiCarlo's been painting that one today. Three two count to Carlos seeing if he can get the first out of the inning. That one's going to be chopped towards Ujima, and that goes through his legs. So that'll be another error for Ujima. That's three now. That's going to score a run. He was kind of shifted over, but once again, that just went straight, straight through the wickets. So as of right now, that'll go down as not an earned run. Pavelchak will not get an RBI for that. Evan Cornwell will come to the dish. Again, Ujima just struggled to grab that one, and it's going to make it a 3-1 to one ball game. So two errors this inning by Ujima have led to a post run, and now they're trying to sacrifice Pavelchak over to second. So this is kind of what I was talking about last inning, where we see the errors on plays and how they can change things in terms of the pitcher's records as well as the hitter's. For a hitter, it goes down as an 0 for at bat because they should have been retired. For the fielder, obviously, they get an error. For a pitcher, runs that are scored when they reach via error do not count towards their resume for the day. Danny Gill reaching on error means that DiCarlo doesn't get charged with that. If Pavelchak scores now, he's not going to get charged with that either. So while the the outfield, excuse me, the infielder in Ujima is going to get charged with an error for that. DiCarlo is not going to be credited with any earned runs. It counts, obviously, towards the scoreboard, but it doesn't count towards his ERA. Cornwell chops that to first. A nice stab by Voss. Flips it over to Ujima. Gets the out at second. Fielder's choice, 3-6. Don't see too many of those. So now when you set up the field, this is why it's important to recognize this too. Danny Gill would have been an, un excuse me, Matt, uh, Michael Pavelchak would have been an unearned run because of what happened there with him reaching on an error. 
However, because now there's one out and two base runners reached via air, technically there would be three outs in the inning at this point. Because of that, any run that scores from here on out will not be charged to DiCarlo. It would be unearned because the inning should have been over because of the two errors that were committed by the fielders. So that one's lined by Corchado into left field. He's going to get on with a single. And now the Eagles in business with first and second and one out in the bottom of the fifth. So it's those little intricacies that when you're watching at home, or even if you're at the ballpark, you may not understand why something happens a certain way or why the stats show a certain thing, and that's why. So three runs right now charged to Carlo, only one earned, and everything from here on out in this inning will also be unearned because technically should already have been three outs in the inning because of the two errors by Ujima, which would have ultimately retired a batter. Now the difference between an error in the field like that, which would have been a sure out, and an error in terms of moving on the base path is, if let's say Danny Gill reached second, after singling the center field, he would technically, in the mind of the scorer, still have to be on first, which then changes the way things roll out with the inning and if the run is earned or unearned. It's not stuff you really have to think about at home because at the end of the day, the score is the score. But for a pitcher, for a fielder, for a batter, it changes whether they're credited with the RBIs, it's credited, it changes whether they're credited with an earned run or not, and it changes whether or not the fielder is credited with something against them in terms of their fielding percentage. So it's almost like a domino effect in terms of when you see things like this happen and how the rest of things will unfold for the pitcher, fielder, batter stats overall. 2-1 count here to DJ Karen, the cleanup hitter. He's going to foul that one off, and the count moves to 2-2. Two and 1-5-3 two. and three for Felician, 3-4 and 0 for the Eagles. Two big errors by Ujima changed the complexion of this inning. And it's really been, again, I mentioned it about the last game that these two teams played where two pass balls made a big difference in the overall score and potentially how the game is played. That one's going to be popped up on the infield. So for those who don't know, this is going to be an infield fly rule. The out is automatic. The reason why that's an automatic out is not because they, you know, just because, is because with less than two outs and with runners on first and second, to prevent the possibility of the fielders from being able to pull off a double play by dropping the fly ball purposely in the rule book, it goes down as an infield fly rule, which means the ball can be dropped by the fielders, and when they are dropped by the fielder, it will be dropped. It can be dropped, and then the closest fielder will get credited with the out. But it goes down as an out no matter what, with less than two outs, because that fielder could potentially drop the ball on purpose, and because the batters can't run because they're trying to see if it'll be caught or not it would cause the potential for a double play in the field. So that's a rule that's only put in place with less than two outs and runners on first and second. Now Justin Rivera will come to the plate with two outs. Now that infield fly rule, no effect now. That's out of the play, out of the playbook now in terms of what can happen. If it's popped up on the infield, the fielder does have to make the grab. Ball is low. On the first pitch from DiCarlo, 1-0. DiCarlo now at 84 pitches heading to that bat. That was pitch number 85, 52 strikes on the day. Got to think he's probably only got one inning left in him, maybe, but I do actually see someone warming up in the bullpen. Rivera fouling off. And again, DiCarlo's pitched pretty well. Like I mentioned before, with the last game and with this game so far, it's really been the Golden Falcons defensively that have let their own team down in terms of helping out the pitcher. Two runs last game from pass balls. A couple runs here from errors. And that one's going to be fouled off. It looked like a check swing, but Rivera got a piece of it. DiCarlo has done what he's had to do. He's forced the Eagles to make contact that they don't maybe always like. And then Ujima's had three errors in this game, which has kind of changed things in terms of the scoring. And then you had the wild pitch by Bartolomeo, excuse me, by DiCarlo that Bartolomeo couldn't handle, allowing another run to score. So defensively, that's been the Golden Falcons' struggle in these first two games so far in the first what, 14 innings or so that you've seen from them defensively, both here and down in Rutherford, New Jersey, a couple days ago, that have really changed the scope of the game and how it can play out. That one's going to be popped up on the infield. This has to be caught, like I mentioned before. Over there at third base to try and grab, that is he now, he does, and that retires the side. 
So after all that, only one run, one hit, two errors, two left on base for the Eagles. They lead 3-1 to one, heading into the top of the sixth inning. Joe Christiana going to go back out there and continue his stellar start right after this. Voss stepping to the dish, dish, Ricky Voss, the graduate outfielder slash first base, and he's playing first today. Oh, and oh my gosh, he tattooed that one into right field. It looks, <laughs> looked better off the bat than it was. Pavlichak's going to get that one in right field for out number one on one pitch. But it looked like Voss lit into that one. Pavlichak really didn't have to move too much for it, but off the bat, it looked like it had the angle. These, these dimensions here at Municipal are a little bit deeper. You got the double wall in the outfield, a little bit Probably, I would say, if I'm looking at Pavelchak out there, I'd have to say it's around 10 to 12 feet high. And then you're also going 382 out to pretty much any part of the ballpark except center, which is 400. We did see a dead center home run last weekend by Southern New Hampshire out over that 400 sign. But not easy to do with the dimensions here at Municipal, hitting one out of here. Voss looked like he put a charge into that one, but it didn't fall where he wanted. That one's going to be chopped over to second. Keller over to first. He now retired. Two away for Walters. So a quick, quick inning so far for Christiana, and that's good for his pitch count. You're in the sixth inning, 72 pitches. You can get out of this under 80, depending on how the seventh shapes up and depending on, you know, obviously the score and if the Eagles can get a few insurance runs even. Possibly you see Christiana for an eighth inning. All depends on how things play out, I would have to say. Looking down in that bullpen, uh, don't really see much action going on. So for now, it's going to be all Christiana, probably. That one's going to be laced in the center field. Right there to get it is Gill. Walters retired, and that's what you needed. A quick, quick one, two, three inning for the Eagles. Joe Christiana... Dealing after six, Jimmy Brennan's going to come to the plate in the bottom of the six. 3-1 Eagles here on the CACC Network.
DiCarlo back out there for a sixth inning. Again, he's had a good performance so far. It's just been the defense that struggled. And we've got a defensive change. Wait to see where it is. Catcher's changed. Can't really see the number in third base. So he now is out of the game, and D. Bartolomeo's out. That one's low for a ball. Try to see the numbers on the field. You can't see the catcher's number because it's blocked, obviously, by his gear. As that one's going to be hit into left field, Jimmy Brennan hits a bomb, and that one's out of here. And the Eagles take a 4-1 to lead. Brennan goes yard to left, and the Eagles bench jumping for Jimmy, and it's 4-1. to Post here in the bottom of the sixth. As that happened, I am still trying to figure out who's where. Walters is now at third. And now Kelly's going to light that one into left field. It's not going to be the same as what we just saw from Brennan. And that's going to be out number one of the inning. Looks like Alex Torres is now at second. So Torres the second, Walters the third, somebody behind the plate. That one's in there for a strike. That's Keller at the dish. I see a one on his back, and I, I'm quickly going through the list of ones. Ray Pereira. Ray Pereira is behind the dish as that one's lined up the middle for a single. So Keller gets on with the single. One out here in the sixth. Now, Danny Gill, he's going to be called for a strike there for swinging at the pitch. Still kind of getting the bearings on all the changes, but I do believe that is Pereira behind the plate because they don't have anybody else with a one. That's the second number that is a fielder. They have Dominic Vincelli who would have a seven on his, but that does not look like a seven. So DiCarlo working, and they're going to try and get Gill a sack here. And that's just going to be an E1 on the throw. Runner's going to move all the way to third. So that's going to be an E1 on the sacrifice. I finally got the bearings all together. I was trying to get everything inputted and also just figure out where exactly everything was at. So here's what we're set up with now. we got runners on first and third. Danny Gill reaches on the third error of the day. Excuse me, fourth error of the day for Felician. There's three, er three errors just to Ujima alone in this one so far. Gill has now reached twice on errors. 
in as many innings. Eagles have put up one each of the last two innings. Excuse me, three innings. And now they're threatening again. That one, and this is an interesting thing too, is DiCarlo, De- even though he threw that one away, it's an error against him. If a run scores, he doesn't get charged with a uh, an earned run. It's kind of a interesting little twist to it, even though he's the one who put himself in the situation. It all goes back to the whole fielding thing. Runners on the corners, one out. And the 0 1 count to Pavelchak. Pavelchak chops that one over. This will be a chance for a double play. It goes 4 3. Run's going to score. So, excuse me, 4 6. 4 6 fielder's choice. Torres to Ujima. Ujima didn't even want to bother throwing over. It looks like Pavelchak hustled down the line. So, fielder's choice. Gets the out 4-6. Hunter Keller scores. And technically, again, because of how many outs there are in the inning, that does not go down as an earned run for DiCarlo because that should have been out number three. Instead, it's out number two. And we play on here. Now, everything else will also be unearned for DiCarlo. That one's fouled off. So, so far, he's been only charged with two earned runs. Joe Christian has done a great job of holding the bats in check of the Golden Falcons. And now with two outs here, he's looking to... DiCarlo is looking to get out of the inning. That one's going to be bobbled. Pavelchak was taking off. That's going to be a stolen base for him, his second of the day. Second of the game, excuse me. And now with a 1-1 count, another runner in scoring position for post. A chance to expand on this lead some more with an RBI single because Pavelchek's easily got the speed to get over to the plate. Take a look at the scores here in a moment after this pitch. 1-1 count, and we'll take a look right now. So it's 12-8 Goldie Beacom leading over Jefferson, bottom 7. We're obviously 4-1, bottom 6. Caldwell leads 9-5 over Bridgeport in the bottom of the 5th. Chestnut Hill, Holy Family just getting underway a little while ago. Bottom of the 2nd, one nothing. Chestnut Hill. Cornwell into left field. That one's going to fall in for a hit. That might be two bases. He's going over to grab it. Yeah, it will be two bases. Going over to grab that was Kendrick. Kind of bobbled it, but the runner never stopped. Pavelchak scores. Run again unearned. Cornwell with an RBI double. Corchado to the plate. The Eagles leading 6-1. to one On what is one of their first offensive hits to score a run. And that's going to do it for DiCarlo here also. So if you look at the scoring today for the Eagles, this is only their second run scored via a hit, a hit that got a runner on base. Their first run came on a ground out sack bunt by Keller. Jimmy Brennan scored on a wild pitch. Michael Pavelchak reached on a scoring, uh, excuse me, on a fielding error. Jimmy Brennan's home run to lead off this inning gave them their second run offensively today. First runner reaching base, though, without an out being recorded. And then... Pavelchak reaching on a fielder's choice. Evan Cornwell with the double right there. Cornwell with the double right there. Now with DiCarlo out of the game, I believe that's... Yep, Dylan Morrill now in the pitch for the Golden Falcons. Get you some numbers on Morrill. Morrill was 1-1 one on one in the year, 7 appearances, 3.86 ERA, 2 saves, 14 innings pitched, 11 hits, 9 runs, 6 earned, 5 walks, and 17 strikeouts. He's given up 5 extra base hits, 3 in the form of a double, and 2 in the form of a home run. And you know, it's interesting we talk about the fielding woes today for Felician. Coming into the game, they've committed 37 errors on the year. Bring that up to 41 now for them. Leading the team in errors is Cole Porter with eight coming into the day. But in coming into the game, Ujima also only committed one so far this year. Now he's up to four on the season. 
Eagles defense committing just 20 this year. And if you look at it, because of those errors, so many errors committed so far for Felician, they've given up 160 runs. Only 125 of them have been earned. So do the math on that. 35 unearned runs this year for Felician pitchers. And DiCarlo had three more today. And he is responsible for the runners on base. So keep that in mind as well. The runners on base are his responsibility. But again, because there's two outs and because of the error, they'll all be unearned runs for him. Getting you a score right now from softball. Post trails 2-1. In the bottom of the third, runner on first, Ricarduli just walked. You know, his two runs just scored in the top of the third for AIC on a sack fly and then a error by Caitlin DeAngelis at third base. Eagles escaped the inning having only given up two runs, but they now trail 2-1 to one in that one. That ball is low to Corchado, the first of Morrill's appearance. So on one end, the Eagles here leading big 6-1. to one. On the other end, your softball team trailing, trying to get in the win column again at 2-14 and 14 to start the year. But the big thing to remember, too, that one's low in the dirt. It's actually going to be a wild pitch. Runner's going to now move over to third in Cornwell. The important thing to remember is even though at 2-14, and 14, it's just like looking at post record right now at 9-13 and 13 for baseball. You've played some tough teams down in Florida, but on top of that, what really matters at the end of the day is how do you perform in your conference games? Not saying that the non-conference games are important because obviously you want to win as much as possible, but... There's a little more extra stock that you have to put in those conference games because they matter towards qualifying for the CACC tournament and getting your shot in the big dance should you win the conference tournament. All that's not possible. You could win all your non-conference games, and then if you go to your conference schedule and you don't, you don't perform there, then it does you no good because a majority of your games in the year end up coming from conference games. So the more you win in conference... The more it matters down the line for the CACC tournament, for your conference tournament, no matter what conference you're in. But obviously, you want to get those non-conference wins to get some momentum rolling into the conference games. That one's chopped foul. Again, there's also other elements that come into play with it in terms of strength of schedule and whatnot. But with the majority of your games being in conference, you could go undefeated in your non-conference slate. But if you were to go over in your conference slate, you're not even going to get an at-large at large bid because you didn't even qualify for your conference tournament. So even though that 2-14 and 14 record stands for post-softball as Corchado grounds that one to first, side retired, Eagles get three more though, and they take a 6-1 to one lead heading into the seventh. And as I was saying, you know, even though you look at that 2-14 and 14 record for your post-university softball team right now. What matters is how they can perform as the conference slate gets going. And obviously they struggled against Caldwell in their first two games, but there's still plenty more to go in the season for them. And down the stretch to right the ship, get into the conference tournament and make some noise. It's all about timing and momentum and what you can do. We'll keep it here as Joe Christiana, it looks like, is going to go back out for a seventh inning. Why not? I mean, he's only at 74 pitches. Let's talk about Christiana a little bit while we wait for him to get his warm-up pitches in. 74 pitches so far, 54 for strikes. So do the math again on that. 54 strikes, 20 balls. Very good ratio to have so far in this one. Facing the middle of the lineup now in Skravanek. Skravanek doubled off him earlier in this one. But the bottom of the Felician order so far, and again, Felician's going to have some work to do. Combined, they have gone... Doing the math right now, one for five, and then you obviously have the new inserts in Torres and Pereira come in. Pereira will bat third in this inning. <laughs> and if it's not Pereira, we'll get confirmation that it's not Pereira and it was another catcher coming into the game because it is just hard to tell between the, between the padding to be able to tell who it is. But Skravanek will come to the dish. Golden Falcons have some work to do against Joe Christiana if they want to get back into this game and get their first conference win of the year. 
Felician comes into this game 10 and 14. Again, we talked about it though just now. Conference play makes a difference. That ball's in there for a strike. Count 0 and 1. Quick look over at softball again. The bases are now loaded for the Eagles with one out in the third. So a golden opportunity there. And as I say that, that one's outside for ball. The check swing no good. Eagles had a chance to score. It was a fielder's choice, though, and they got the out at home. So there's two outs with the bases loaded in a 2-1 game. If you're looking to watch that one, it's also available on YouTube and the CACC Network. Griffin Cass on the call for that one. Mike Vesci joining you here for a doubleheader of softball. Uh, excuse me, baseball. I'm talking about softball right now. Uh, and we're in game one still of this one. As Kravanek's going to line that one in the hole, that's a base hit. And that's what you need if you're the Golden Falcons to try and get yourself back into this game. A lot of work to be done. As Bialosi comes to the plate now with the runner on and no one out. Mike Vesci joining you on hand for baseball. We're in... Game one of two, nine innings here, seven innings after this, about 30 minutes. So we'll take a quick break in between. I'll probably eat and get a drink and let my voice rest for a bit because I've been talking a lot. And then we'll play seven more innings. But we got three more to play here, two and a half if the Eagles are leading after top of the ninth. No one count here to Bialosi. Runner on first. Christiana now at just reached the 80 pitch mark. Yeah, just look at softball. They are unable to score with the bases loaded and one out. That inning just ended. So they trail 2-1 heading into the fourth after that. Christiana with the 1-1 to Bialosi. In there for a strike, pretty much right down the pipe. One, two, what a nice pitch right there. I mean, there was so much movement on it from left to right. It came back over the plate. It was out over near by Alosi. And now we can finally confirm that was Ray Pereira behind the plate for certain. So Ray Pereira up to the dish. First at bat of the day. Christiana now at 83 pitches. I do start to see some arms getting loose in the pen, but they're all wearing sweatshirts, so can't really confirm who it may or may not be yet until they obviously take the sweatshirts off. But depending on, again, how many pitches Christiana works through this inning... I can see him at this point in the game with it being a 6-1 to one score. Getting an eighth inning out of this is that one's going to be fouled out of play. You know, obviously you don't want to too early in the year have your pitchers throw too, too many pitches and tire them out for the bigger games down the line that you have. But with the way Christiana's dealing and it being a 5-1 lead, excuse me, 5-run lead, and him not even being at 100 pitches yet, you have some wiggle room. And then you give him a little bit of a short leash in the eighth. He allows a runner or two to reach, then you pull him. But with five runs to work with, it does change the complexity of the game and in terms of what you go to if you're Ray Scold in the bullpen. You know, you don't maybe have to bring in a, a Brennan Holligan like he played the other day against Felician in a three-run game. Well, at the time, it was a two-run game. You can go to another available arm in the pen that is just as reliable but doesn't have to be perfect as maybe Holligan would have to be in those higher pressure situations. As that one's fouled back by Pereira, the count remains at 2-2. Two and two. Ujima on deck. Inning ending double play would be ideal here if you're Christiana. Keep that pitch count below 90, and that one's going to be fouled off. This will be pitch 90 from Christiana. It's 
2-2 count to Pereira. Got him swinging, two down. So pitch number nine needs a strikeout. That's Christiana's sixth strikeout. He's only got one walk today. It's all about efficiency, too. If you think about it, people like to go for those big strikeout numbers sometimes or look at them and say, wow, that pitcher's dominant because they're getting a lot of strikeouts. But at times, getting more strikeouts can also work against you in terms of your pitch count because obviously you have to three pitches for a strikeout. And if you're not getting them 0-2 every time, which most of the time most pitchers are not getting them to go down 0-2 on three straight pitches, it does work your pitch count up a lot more. So the more you see strikeouts in the the final stat line is that one's fouled away to the right by Ujima. The more that pitch count raises up, and Christiana's only got six. So if you do the math on that, six times three, that's 18 strikes minimum, not counting all the foul balls that factor into that. And then with walks, he's only got one. That's at least four balls, and then you have a few strikes in there as well. Depends on the counts, and those counts help bring your pitch count up. That one's outside for ball one. And especially when you have an 0-2 count, you're not always looking to just go right in and attack that hitter. You're kind of playing around with it, try and paint the corner, or you try and go outside and get him to chase rather than going right down the pipe with it when you already have a commanding 0-2 lead on him in the count as that one's low for ball two. So now this will be pitch number 95 for Cristiano. There was some stirring before. It looked like it was just loosening of arms. I don't really see anybody else doing anything though now like I did a moment ago as this pat this count now goes to three and two. Christian has had a couple of good starts so far for the Eagles. He's been hot and cold as of late, but also, again, got to look at the opponents that he was facing in those games as well because that does make a difference. Is that one's going to miss the outside corner. Ujima walks. Now it's first and second for the top of the lineup and Thomas Kendrick. But like I mentioned, Christiana, it's been a hit or miss sort of year so far. His first outing, six innings against Lynn, gives up one run unearned. His next start against number two in the nation, North Greenville, he lasts three and two thirds, gives up five runs, all earned. Then against the Delphi, he comes back with four and two thirds innings, three runs earned. Not bad. And then against Queens, as this one's popped up, this might be the day for Christian, that's popped up to short. Cornwell makes the grab, and that'll end the inning. But we'll keep it here as I explain a little more about what I was talking about with Christiana. So after that, if this is his last inning, which it very well could possibly be, this was another good start for him to kind of get the ball rolling. Like I mentioned, that good opening start against Lynn. And then he came back with a couple, not tough ones. I mean, giving up only three runs against the Delphi is a solid performance. Against North Greenville, to do that against the number two team in the nation, only give up five, is pretty solid. But then he had his most dominant effort so far this year against Queens, which he went seven innings, six hits, no runs, 11 strikeouts to two walks. His pitch count in that one, notably, 113. So when we talk again about that pitch count, Christiana just hit 97 right now. What's the big difference in that? Probably the strikeout numbers. He's only got six today. He had 11 in that game, and that adds on an additional 15 pitches, possibly, to your repertoire. For him now, he's only got six in this one. However, he's coming off of a rough start in the last game against New Haven. He only went three and two-thirds innings, gave up seven runs, six of those earned, three strikeouts and a walk, two, wild, uh, two home runs given up. So this is a good bounce-back start. This is the first time in 10 days that Christiana has taken the mound for a game. And he's clearly in that time, it's given him some time to rest and recover. And now he's been in a good spot for this one today. So as so we head to the top of, excuse me, the bottom of the seventh inning, it's six to one post. Looking to throw down the hammer now on Morrill, who's on the mound. That one's high for a ball. Count moves to one and zero. Oh. Now, Morrill outside with that one. Count falls to 2-0. and Middle of the lineup for the Eagles has not really produced much outside of Jimmy Brennan. DJ Karen and Justin Rivera both 0-3 for 3 coming into their at-bats this inning. 
That one's fouled off by Karen. Count moves to two and one. Two one to Karen. That one's going to be low for a ball. Count moves to three and one. Moral deals, and that one's fouled back towards us. Count goes full. Eagles looking to take game one of this doubleheader today and win their second straight against Felician. To start the conference schedule. So Karen's going to walk, bringing Rivera to the plate. Runner on for the Eagles as they'll look to continue to add some more. Very good start to this doubleheader for them. And now the bats have started to get going the last couple of innings offensively. Again, they, that one's going to be chopped over to Ujima, and that's probably going to be another error for him. Yep, that's – Ujima struggled over there at shortstop today. And on that one, again, just not able to handle it. Kind of took a hard hop on him, but he was right in front of it and knocked it down and then just wasn't able to recover. And honestly, by the time he recovered, Rivera still wasn't even three-quarters of the way up the line. Five errors for Felician in game number one so far. And the Eagles in business with two on and no one out. And Jimmy Brennan to the dish, swings and misses at that one, count 0-1. One six and five across the top for Felician, six seven and zero for the Eagles, and they've benefited heavily off of those errors. Again, some of them were tough plays, but at times, and Rivera was thinking about going to second, but Karen wasn't moving off of second, so he has to get back at that pitch in the dirt. Pereira was able to keep it close enough in front of him where no one can move. But the Eagles have benefited off of a few costly errors by Ujima. He's had four over there. And then DiCarlo, the starter, had one last inning. That one's in there for a strike. Count moves to one and two. Now Brennan lifts that one in the center field. That one's tailing back, and this is going to go over the center fielder's head. That was Skravanek. Runners coming around from first and second. Rivera's in the score. Excuse me, Karen's in the score. Rivera to third. Brennan with the double. And the Eagles have taken a 7-1 lead. Skravanek just kind of lost it, it looks like. It was going to be a tough one, too, to get anyways. And he was reaching over the shoulder to get it. But it never touched his glove. It just kind of got over him into the outfield wall. So Brennan's now got a double and a home run. I believe he's also got a single. I have to double check. That one's outside for a ball. Yeah, Jimmy Brennan's got a home run, double, and a single. Chances are, unless the Eagles are able to bat around in these next two innings, which I, I wouldn't say it's out of the realm of possibility, as that's a wild pitch, they're going to hold the runners. Count moves to 2-0. and oh. Rivera stays put at third, Brennan at second. So Jimmy Brennan is a triple away from the cycle. Remains to be seen, though. They would have to, again, bat around now with eight straight batters in the next two innings, and depending on how things shake out, they may not be able to. 
Yeah, that one's in there for a strike, and that's what Morrill needs to try and get himself out of this jam. Rivera's run would go down as unearned should he score. Technically, there is one out, or would be one out in this inning, if not for the error. But that is still the only unearned run. Once there are two outs in the inning, that would make everything else unearned because of that fielding error by Ujima at first, excuse me, at short, on the play that he was trying to get over to first. But he's behind in the count, 3-1, Morrill is, to Kelly. And that one's fouled off, gets back into it 3-2. and two. Doesn't get any easier, too, for the Felician pitching if they're not able to get the bottom of this order up because then you go right back to the top and Pavelcheck, Cornwell, and Corchado, who are 3 for 11 so far. And that one's going to be chopped over to third. Going to be a tough play over there for Walters on one hop. He's going to be safe. Infield single for Jalen Kelly hustling down that line. Walter's not able to make the play. Base is loaded now for Hunter Keller. However, it doesn't, doesn't mean it always a bad thing, too. Even though it is the base loaded, no one out, you do now have a play to every base. Now, would a Felicia elect for one at home or to get two on the base pass and allow a run to score since it's already 7-1? to one? We'll see. If it was more like a 2-1 to one game, 3-1 to one game, they might go for the play at home. I would have to think, especially because you're seeing that the, the field for them is... At normal depth, they're probably thinking double play ball rather than going home with the throw in a 7-1 to one game. It's going to be high to Keller. Counts 1-0. and oh. Quick check over at softball 2. They have tied the game up at 2 on a double steal. After a single by Sam Riccarduli, Carly Peruso stole home and Riccarduli was out at 2nd. Count moves to 2-0. They're headed to the top of the fifth. Again, for softball, it's only seven innings. We play nine here, and then we play seven. Per the conference rules for conference doubleheaders. That one swung on a miss. The count moves to 2-1. and one. Low and outside, count moves to three and one. On Keller with the bases loaded. A chance to really do some damage. On this chilly day here at Municipal. I will say the one nice thing is there's no wind, which would make this much more brutal as Keller's going to line that one to the center field. Skravanek coming on, makes the grab. Rivera not going to score from third. Everybody stays put. That's the first out of the inning. Now Danny Gill comes to the dish. Again, Rivera's run unearned. If an out's recorded here and Rivera scores, then technically it would be unearned because it would have been the final out of the inning. Excuse me. Rivera's run will be unearned no matter what. Any run after him that was scored via an out that's not the third out would at this point be unearned as well. Ball low, counts 1-0. and Morrill still on the mound. Can't imagine Felician's going to try and reach too, too deep at this point into their bullpen over these last couple of innings only because you still have another game after this. Again, it's only seven innings, so that helps as well. Looks like some pitchers are getting loose for the Eagles, but I don't really see anybody throwing hard yet. So I got to think Christiana probably is going to go out there for an eighth. And then if he gives up a hit or two, he's probably going to get get yanked at, at that point. That one's lying down the line by Walters. That's going to be trouble, and that's probably going to be two runs, maybe three. Trying to grab it over in the corner is Kendrick. He does. Kelly hustling around, and the big man gets it done. He scores. 
It's a three-run triple for Hunter. Three-run double for Hunter Keller. And the Eagles now lead 10-1. to Excuse me, Danny Gill. So at this point now, after Danny Gill's three-run double, it just got confirmation because it is different with every conference. Should the run score here with before the end of the inning, 10-run mercy rules in effect, the game would be over at 11-1, and then we'd head to game two a little while later. That ball's low from Morrill. One on one the count. Danny Gill with the three run double. I apologize for thinking that was Hunter Keller. He was up just before that. Keller had flown out to center. Now top of the lineup up in Michael Pavelchak. Pavelchak 0 for today. Again, I mentioned he on a mini hit streak after getting that on base streak snapped. One two count. Pavelchak down the line foul. Cow remains one and two. Pavelchak looking to potentially end it. And send us to game two with a 10-run win. That one's fouled off. And I should also add, if that's the case, Joe Cristiano would have a complete game. Technically speaking, even though it would only be a seven-inning complete game, it is still considered a complete game because only seven innings would be played. And still only one out. so And no force out at any base. Except first, when the ball's in play. Pavelchak, I don't think he went. He didn't. He remains alive. Count two and two. Nine runs across in the last four innings for post. That one's fouled off. And the bats, again, I mentioned they hadn't been getting as much in the way of the offensive side of things. It had been a lot of the Felician fielding. This inning, we've seen the bats come alive and not benefit just solely off of the defense of Felician. They are starting to get the things going offensively, which is good to see for a team that's been struggling to get a lot of runs in a game. This is a big breakout game for them, and now you get one, maybe you're able to continue it. That's going to be a wild pitch, and Gill's going to move up to third. And now just 90 feet stand between post and... Their second conference one of the year. Against Felicia. Three two count to Pavelchak. Morrill looking in. Infield in. And Pavelchak's gonna chop them one up the middle, and we'll see you in game two. Michael Pavelchak with the I guess if you want to call it de facto walk off single. Joe Christiana is going to get a complete game for this now. Keep in mind, that run is earned. Pavelchak with the RBI single, and this ball game is over. Just a two-hour game in the books. Post moves to 2-0 and in conference play. Felician falls to 0-2. Now the Eagles 10-13 overall. Felician falls to 10-15 overall. Jack... Joe Cristiano with the win. As we look at his numbers for the day, Cristiano is going to get his second win of the season and a complete game. DiCarlo will take the loss and fall to one and three. 
Joe Christiana on the day before we sign off for a bit. 97 pitches, 7 innings, 6 hits, 1 run, 2 walks, 7 strikeouts. So a fantastic performance from him. The Eagles get a big Game 1 victory. We'll be back here in about 30 minutes or so. We're going to sign off for now, though. Post wins Game 1, 11-1 over Felicia. And I'm Mike Feshi signing off on the CACC Network.